Welcome to Text Around a Cube. Today I'm going to show you how to build this really cool text effect where the text moves across this cube. You'll notice that as it goes down the side here, it gets a little darker and disappears off into space there. Now, you may be thinking, wow, this must be really complicated. Well, the truth is, it's just one tween acting on two elements. And when I click this fancy little toggle 3D button here, you'll see exactly what's happening. Both sides just have this heading one text in them that's moving basically at the same speed, but we're using a special stagger value so that everything lines up perfectly, all right? So what we're gonna do today is walk you through the setup of this. We'll spend most of our time figuring out which properties we want to animate, the starting and ending values, and how we're going to get that stagger amount just right. In the next video, we'll take what we learned today and make it fully responsive. So we'll start off with a quick overview of our starter file. For the HTML here, the first thing we're going to see is this toggle element, which is this button right here for toggling 3D settings. It is not activated right now. Our wrapper div is just this light background here that sort of fills up the entire body. And inside the wrapper, we have our text cube. Our text cube is going to have multiple cube faces, but right now we just have the front face, which is this dark square here with the heading one text right here. We eventually will be adding a side to our cube, which will go over here off to the left. Now for the CSS, it's not anything terribly complex. We have my body to be set up to be full screen. Our toggle button just has some very basic font styling. And our wrapper div has flexbox set up so that things will be centered nicely. And when we get into the text cube, it's important to note that it has a fixed width and height of 400 pixels. Before we make things responsive, we're going to use these pixel values. Now every face inside the text cube has its width and height set to 100% so that it will automatically fill in the width and height that's set on the parent text cube. Each face of the cube, we're only seeing the front right here, is going to have Flexbox set up to center things vertically. And we're using Justify Content Start to have it right up against the left edge here. As we move on down, every heading one inside the text cube is going to have margins removed. Its width is going to be set to fit content, which is very important later on when we're going to need to measure the width of the text. White space set to no wrap is very important. Watch what happens when I get rid of that by commenting it out. You'll see the text breaks on multiple lines and that's no bueno. So let me get rid of that. And I also want to point out that the font size is fixed at 250 pixels. In the future, we will be making the font size responsive as well as the text cube size responsive. But for now, we're going to start with these fixed pixel values. Now we have text cube side, which will make the left side of the cube a little bit darker once it actually exists. And poking on down here, we have our fancy classes that are going to make things 3D and cube-like. But let's not worry about all that right now. What we want to focus on is getting all the text here that we can't see to start on the right edge of the cube, move all the way across until all of the text passes over the face. So I've created this little diagram to help you better see what we're going to be doing. Here we have our cube that has a width of 400 pixels, and we have our heading one text that's lined up with its left edge at an X of zero on the left of the cube. Now we're gonna start off with the text over here, okay? So if the cube is 400 pixels wide, that means our starting X value is going to be 400. And what we're going to do is animate it back to an X of zero. And then we also have to move it to the left based on 100% of its width. So we're going to be moving it like this so that just the tip of that G gets out of view or outside of the cube, okay? And when we're animating something based on a percentage of its width, that's going to be the X percent value. And if we move it to the left based on 100% of its width, 
it's going to be an x percent of negative 100. So we're going to be animating the x and the x percent at the same time. So just to be really clear, we're going to start with the text over here and it's going to have a starting value of x400 and x percent zero. And then the ending values are going to be an x of zero and an x percent of negative 100. And we're gonna plug all these values into a from to tween. So let's go ahead and start coding the animation. Let's hop on over to my JavaScript panel here. And what I'm gonna do is create a variable called animation, and it's going to be a gsap dot from to tween. The target selector is going to be dot text cube, and we're gonna find the heading one inside of there. And for our from values, we're gonna start at an X of 400. And for our two values, let's just go with an X of zero. Let's just deal with these first. And what we should see is that. It's a little bit hard to catch. So let's activate GS Dev Tools really quick. And if we rewind quick to the beginning of this animation, you'll see there we have the text just off of the right edge of the cube. And if we go to scrub forward, you'll see that we end up at that X of zero. So there's our X of 400 to an X of zero. Now we also need to go again to the left 100% of the width of the text. So we're going to want to have matching from and to values. So we're going to put in an X percent of zero. And in the two values here, we're going to do X percent of negative 100. And now what we should see is that we're going to go all the way across, all right? Quite quick right now, because we're using a duration of 0.5 seconds, but let's just go back to here. We're starting aligned at the right of the cube, and we're going to end up aligned at the left edge of the cube, all right? And that's exactly what we want for the animation. As far as those start and end values go, I'm gonna make this a little bit better though by putting a duration of four on there and we're gonna set the ease to be none. And now that looks a lot better, okay? So we've gotten the text now to move perfectly from edge to edge of that cube. And the next part is going to be adding another face and getting everything lined up. So to add a side to our cube, we're gonna go into the HTML and I'm going to copy the existing front face and I'm going to just paste a copy of it right here. And now you'll see that we have two things animating exactly the same way, all right? And they look exactly identical, all right? They both have the same background color and font sizing because they're the same and they're both animating exactly the same way because our tween is set up to animate any heading one inside of our text cube. I don't want this side sitting down here, nor do I want it looking the same way. Now you may recall that in my CSS, we have this CSS rule right here called side and it has a different background color and font color. So let's go into the HTML and instead of making this a face front, we're going to make it a face side. And now you'll see that there's a darker background and darker text because it's kind of going to be in like a shadow area of the cube off to the left. Now to get this face side here to be on the left side of the face, we need to move it up 100% and over to the left 100%. So as you might imagine, we have some CSS that will handle that. I have this comment here says, build cube with fancy class, all right? And you'll see here that if there is a side as a child of a fancy element, we're going to apply this transform, which will move it to the left 100% and up 100%. And before I applied this class, I wanted you to see everything exactly how it would be in the natural flow of the HTML document. So let's go up to the HTML, and now on this wrapper here, I'm going to apply the fancy class. And now you'll see that the side face is literally to the side. Now this animation looks a little bit weird because we don't have overflow hidden set yet. And what we're going to do is turn that on right now by going into the CSS. 
and where we see our rule for a cube face, I'm just going to uncomment the overflow hidden here. And now we have things getting closer to being a cube. But I don't want to see the animation on the side face until the front face has its C right here up against the edge. And then it's going to appear as if it's bleeding into this next side face over here. So right now it should be very clear that these animations are both happening at the same time, completely synchronized. But I want to wait until this C right here gets as close to the edge as possible before I start the one over here on the side. So let's focus on GS Dev Tools now. And I'm just going to move over just a little bit to the right. And I think that's pretty good. And what we get here is a time of 0.77. And I'm going to use that as a stagger amount in my animation. So let's go into the JavaScript. And I'm going to add a stagger property here and set the value to 0.77. And now that looks pretty good when it's playing fast. It almost looks synchronized perfectly. However, if I rewind to right where the C touches the edge, you'll notice that I'm at 0.77. Well, you would think exactly now is where the text on this side should start showing up. But if I scrub forward just very slowly, you'll see that there's a little bit of animation where we're not seeing that new text yet. And right around here, you're going to see that we have this sort of jaggy gap, all right? You might be saying, well, why isn't it perfectly exactly lined up the way that it should be? Well, the reason for that is because the edge of the text isn't really exactly at the bounding box. In this example here, I just have some heading one code with a border. And I want to point out the fact that we have this little bit of space right in here between the left edge of the character and the bounding box, which specifies basically the width of the element. So there's just this little bit that we need to animate extra before we can actually see that side C coming in. So with that said, what we need to do is just sort of nudge this number back just a little bit to maybe 0.75. And now the next time that this plays, I think we're going to see that it looks a little bit better. So let's go ahead and pause. And I'm just going to go right back to where this C touches. And then you'll see that it's almost exactly perfect, all right? That's looking really good. There's no weird gaps there. And again, when it's playing at normal speed, chances are you wouldn't really catch it. But while we're here, I just want to make it really clear where these numbers are coming from, all right? So at 0.77 is where this C is going to start moving over, but we just have to account for that little bit of space and start the side one a little bit earlier so that they match up so nicely like this. Next, we'll be adding the 3D settings. So over in our CSS, you may have remembered that I have this fancy class here, okay? And this is where we're going to be adding the 3D effects. The first thing I want to point out is that whenever the text cube is inside of a fancy parent, it's going to have perspective 800 pixels, which will allow us to put some 3D effects on it. Without perspective, everything would look very flat. Now for our side element that's already transformed here, I just want to rotate it in 3D space using rotate Y of negative 45 degrees. And now this kind of works. It's just that we don't want the side all the way over here. The problem is that the transform origin is in the center here. And we want to rotate the side around a point here, which would be on the right side and middle vertically. So to do that in my fancy side, I'm going to set the transform origin to be 100%, 50%. And now you'll see that size exactly where we want it. And it's starting to look like a real cube. Let's just play that one more time so that we can fully appreciate it. Ah, uh, and now I just want to take my cube here and move it down on the page a little bit. So in my CSS, I want to point out that my wrapper div all the way up here has align items start. I'm going to switch this over to center. 
And there we go. We have our cube beautifully centered on the page and we have this wonderful 3D text effect that again is only one tween. So I hope lessons like this really show you the power of GSAP and creative coding, which I always consider doing a lot with a little code, all right? I just set this up to loop and it's such a wonderfully beautiful effect. Now, it looks great now because we're using these sort of fixed pixel sizes for everything, but what I want to show you is that if we go into the CSS, and of course now everything these days needs to be flexible and responsive, I'm going to change the width and height of our cube over to 40 viewport width units for both. And now on initial load, things seem to be hmm, a little bit off, you know, kind of don't catch it, but let me pause and watch what happens when the uh, C comes in. Oh, that's actually really quite bad. All right. So um, we don't want that at all. And if I keep playing and go ahead and resize the window to make things bigger, you're going to find out that it gets really off and out of whack. All right. We don't want this at all. So if we scrub back to that 0.77 time, which is how we hard coded our stagger value to right about here. Notice that right when the C gets to the edge here, we're already seeing CR in the side. And again, if we keep this running and we resize the window down to something like this, well, right now the text doesn't even fit in the cube, which is bad. Uh, but you're going to find out that we have a whole lot of different things that we need to uh, tackle when we get into making this responsive. But don't fret because next week we're going to have the fully responsive version ready to go for you. We can shrink the window down like this, still works perfectly, and of course it's going to work perfectly at a larger size, okay? And we'll also get this toggle 3D button working if you're interested in how I did that. I'll give you a quick little walkthrough. So study this code, play around with it, and come back next week and we'll take it to the end. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video. I don't want to keep you much longer, but I do want you to know that I worked at Greensock back when this was their logo, okay? I was there when they started transitioning from Flash to JavaScript, and I was learning most of these tools before documentation even existed, all right? So I'm just creating lessons that I wish I had when I was learning this stuff, all right? I've taught thousands of developers how to master the basics of GSAP and use all their special tools, all right? I've been doing this for over 10 years, and uh, although the lessons might not always be the prettiest or the fanciest, I really want you to master the fundamentals so that when you see effects online, you can say, hey, you know what? I know what tools I need to build that, all right? So there's this old saying that says, if you want to learn how to build a house, grab a hammer and follow a home builder around for six months. Well, through my Creative Coding Club courses, that's basically what I'm allowing you to do, okay? I want you to jump in, do the lessons just a little bit each week, and you'll have an opportunity to see just how I would build these things, all right? I'll show you step by step. We'll look at the CSS, the HTML. I'll teach you some basic JavaScript tricks along the way. You don't have to be a front end expert for this stuff, all right? I'm going to keep it simple, but you're going to be amazed at the results if you put in the time. So I welcome you to check out these courses and discover the joy of animating with code. See you in the club.